This limit looks extremely scary at first glance. For someone new to mathematics, this feels super overwhelming. But once we slow down and move step by step, this expression turns into something surprisingly beautiful. Our goal here is to find the value of this limit as n goes to infinity. To keep things simple and organized, let us give this limit a name and call it L. The main trouble in this problem comes from three places. The factorial, the nth root, and the presence of n in the denominator. To deal with all of these at the same time, we will use one very powerful tool from mathematics, namely logarithms. Logarithms are extremely helpful because they allow us to bring exponents down and convert products into sums. This is exactly what we need here. The first thing we do is rewrite this n root as an exponent or power, 1 over n. After doing that, we take the natural logarithm on both sides of the equation involving L. This gives us the natural log of L equal to the natural log of the entire limit expression. Instead of writing the natural log as ln, I will write it as log, because my latex editor doesn't have ln in it. Okay, now here comes an important idea. The natural logarithm is a continuous function. Because of this property, we are allowed to interchange the order of the limit and the logarithm, which means instead of first taking the limit and then taking the log, we can first take the log and then take the limit. Next, we will use three very nice properties of logarithms. The first property, or the quotient rule, says that the log of a over b equals log a minus log b. The second property, or the power rule, says that the log of m raised to power n equals n times log of m. The third property, or the product rule, says that the log of a times b equals log of a plus log b. Applying the quotient rule splits our expression into the natural log of the numerator, which is this, minus the natural log of the denominator, or this. Then, applying the power rule, allows us to pull this one over n exponent outside the logarithm. So now the expression becomes 1 over n multiplied by the log of n factorial minus the log of n. This already looks much cleaner than what we started with, right? Now we must deal with the log of n factorial, which may still look intimidating. Here comes another magic. Remember what factorial actually means? The factorial of n is simply the product of all whole numbers, starting from 1 and ending at n. So, what comes to our mind now? Yes, we will use the product rule of logarithm, where the log of n factorial turns into a sum of logs, starting from the log of 1, then the log of 2, and continuing all the way up to the log of n. In compact form, this can be written as a summation log of k, where the index k runs from 1 to n. We now substitute this summation back into our expression. Wow, now it looks so much simplified. But we are not done yet. To combine this log of n with this summation, we use a clever trick. We multiply the log of n by 1, but we will write this one as n over n. Now, group this n and log of n together in this manner. This allows us to think of the log of n as being added to itself n times. In other words, n log of n can be written as a summation k equals 1 to n of log of n. This was a crucial step because once we rewrite the log of n in summation form, both parts of our expression now involve sums over the same index k equals 1 to n. Observe that both terms are written as summations, and both have a common factor of 1 over n, so we can combine them into a single summation. Factoring out 1 over n gives us the sum of the difference between two logarithms. Using the logarithm quotient rule once again, the difference of logs becomes 1 over n times summation of k equals 1 to n of log of k over n. Amazing! The actual fun begins here. 
This is the moment where algebra turns into calculus, because this looks like a Riemann sum. A Riemann sum is a special kind of sum that approximates the area under a curve and eventually becomes a definite integral as n goes to infinity. Now, if the function f of x here is the natural log of x, then the left side of this formula becomes this, and the right side becomes the integral of the log of x, where x goes from 0 to 1. Therefore, this limit with summation is nothing but this definite integral. This is an improper integral because the natural log of x is not defined at 0. To solve it, we use a technique called integration by parts. We choose u as log of x and dv as dx. Differentiate both sides to get du as 1 over x times dx and v equals x. Substitute it here. This gives us x times log x minus the integral of 1, which is nothing but x. Next, we evaluate this expression from 0 to 1. At the upper limit 1, the natural log of 1 is 0, so the expression becomes minus 1. At the lower limit, 0, this term becomes 0. Now we cannot directly substitute 0 because the log of 0 is not defined, so we take a limit as a variable, say a, which approaches 0 from the right. This creates an indeterminate form because a goes to 0 while the log of a goes to negative infinity. To resolve this, we rewrite this product as a quotient, which means log a divided by this a becomes 1 over a in the denominator. Now we will apply the L'Hopital rule, which says that if a limit results in an indeterminate form, then we differentiate the numerator and the denominator separately and then evaluate the limit again. After differentiating the numerator, we get 1 over a, and differentiating the denominator gives minus 1 over a square. This fraction becomes negative a, and thus when a approaches 0, the limit turns out to be 0. Putting everything together, the value of the definite integral comes out to be minus 1. Finally, we return to our original goal of finding l. We earlier showed that the log of L is equal to this integral. Since the integral equals minus 1, the natural log of L is minus 1. To find L itself, we raise the base E to both sides. By the definition of logarithms, this leaves us with L equal to 1 over E. So, after a long journey through logarithms, sums, and integrals, we arrive at a surprisingly simple and elegant final answer. That is, the value of the original limit is 1 over e, which is roughly this. My mind is super duper blown away right now. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good!